I thought I was a victim, not a suspect. Maybe. Maybe you got shot back at. We'll know soon. In the early 1960s, the casting process for The Fugitive began, a groundbreaking TV series that would capture audiences worldwide. For the lead role of Dr. Richard Kimball, numerous actors were considered before David Jansen secured the part. Known for his work on the series Richard Diamond, Private Detective, Jansen's ability to convey vulnerability and determination made him an ideal choice. Meanwhile, casting directors searched for someone compelling to portray Lieutenant Gerard, the relentless pursuer of Dr. Kimball. After various auditions, Bill Raish landed the role. Interestingly, Raish had previously lost a leg due to a train accident, a detail shared by the character he would play. Known as One-Armed Man, this real-life connection added depth to his performance. Barbara Hale, already famous for her role in Perry Mason, joined the cast as Kimball's loyal friend, Grace Henderson. Her warm presence complemented Jansen's intensity, contributing to the show's emotional resonance. During initial rehearsals, it became apparent that certain pairings lacked necessary chemistry. Producers arranged chemistry tests to assess potential replacements. One notable instance involved Dabney Coleman testing alongside Jansenator. Ultimately, however, producers decided against replacing anyone, believing the existing cast members could grow into their roles. Throughout production, the ensemble faced challenges, but remained dedicated to bringing authenticity to their performances. Their hard work paid off when The Fugitive debuted in September 1963, garnering critical acclaim and viewer adoration. Today, this classic continues to inspire through its gripping narrative and memorable characters. Some of your old college chums, the bookmakers. Well, I can't. The Fugitive's creator, Quinn Martin, was known for his meticulous attention to detail and innovative storytelling techniques. He approached each episode like a self-contained movie, ensuring every aspect of production lived up to his high standards. Martin drew inspiration from various sources, including classic literature and films. His love for thrilling narratives led him to create this classic TV series centered around Dr. Richard Kimball's relentless pursuit of justice while evading capture. One notable influence on Martin's direction was Alfred Hitchcock's suspenseful style. This can be seen throughout the series, particularly in scenes where tension builds steadily, keeping viewers on edge. Collaboration played a significant role in shaping the final product. Martin worked closely with talented directors such as Jerry Hopper and Walter Grauman, who brought their unique perspectives and expertise to the table. These collaborative efforts resulted in visually stunning episodes filled with emotional depth. Moreover, casting choices significantly impacted the overall feel of the show. Barry Morse and David Jansen delivered compelling performances that truly made the audience connect with the characters. Their chemistry added another layer of complexity to the unfolding drama. Behind the camera, cinematographers like Robert B. Hauser crafted striking visual compositions that heightened the sense of urgency and paranoia experienced by Dr. Kimball during his flight. Each frame served a purpose, contributing to the narrative flow seamlessly. Overall, it was through these collective efforts, influenced by diverse artistic styles and executed via close collaboration between skilled professionals, that The Fugitive became more than just a television program. It turned into a cultural phenomenon still admired today. You know, he's big and he's tough and he doesn't give an inch. The Fugitive is a classic TV series that first aired in 1963. This show tells the story of Dr. Richard Kimball, who was wrongfully accused of murdering his wife. On the run from the law, he seeks to find the real killer, a mysterious one-armed man. Do you have a cherished memory associated with this TV series? Maybe it's the thrill of watching each episode, wondering if Dr. Kimball will finally clear his name. Or perhaps there's a particular scene or moment that has had a lasting impact on you. Throughout its four seasons, The Fugitive delivered plenty of suspenseful moments, unexpected twists, and emotional scenes. From car chases to close calls, this show kept viewers on their toes. And even though it ended more than five decades ago, it remains popular among fans today. Did you know that The Fugitive inspired a hit movie in 1993 starring Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones, or that it won multiple Emmy Awards during its original run? There are many fascinating facts about this iconic TV series. From humorous behind-the-scenes anecdotes to heartbreaking tales about the actors' lives off-screen, we've gathered some fun, surprising, and moving stories about The Fugitive. So stay tuned, and while you watch, why not share your own memories and experiences related to this classic show? We'd love to hear what makes The Fugitive special to you. 
What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this TV series? Share your thoughts in the comments below. In the early 1960s, the production team of The Fugitive faced many challenges in creating this classic TV series. The show followed Dr. Richard Kimball, played by David Jansen, on his run from the law while pursuing the one-armed man who murdered his wife. Set design was crucial to establishing the right atmosphere. Homes, hospitals, motels, and other locales had to appear authentic yet intriguing. Art directors and set decorators paid meticulous attention to every detail, ensuring each scene looked believable and visually engaging. They used props, color schemes, and furniture styles consistent with the time period and location, enhancing the storyline and viewer experience. Filming took place across various California landscapes to mimic middle America. This decision helped control costs, but presented its own set of difficulties. Transporting equipment, managing large crews, and coordinating shooting schedules proved challenging. Yet, these hurdles did not deter the determined production staff. One notable challenge involved capturing chase scenes and outdoor sequences featuring the famous train that appeared throughout the series. To achieve realistic motion, crew members developed innovative rigging systems allowing cameras to move smoothly along railroad tracks. These custom setups let them capture thrilling perspectives, intensifying the dramatic tension. Despite limited technological resources compared to today's standards, the Fugitive's creators demonstrated impressive ingenuity. By leveraging available tools and inventive problem-solving, they overcame numerous obstacles, delivering a high-quality product that resonated with audiences worldwide. <laughs> The Fugitive first aired on American television in 1963 and quickly became a hit. This classic TV series follows the story of Dr. Richard Kimball, a man falsely accused of murdering his wife. After being convicted and sentenced to death, he escapes from custody and embarks on a journey to find the one-armed man he believes is the true culprit. David Jansen, who plays Kimball, delivers a compelling performance throughout the series. His portrayal of a man relentlessly pursued while also trying to prove his innocence is both gripping and emotional. The supporting cast, including Barry Morse as Lieutenant Gerard, adds depth to the narrative and creates tense moments as they close in on Kimball. Over its four seasons, the show received critical acclaim and high ratings. Its innovative format, combining elements of drama, suspense, and action, kept viewers engaged and guessing until the very end. Each episode featured a self-contained storyline while still contributing to the larger narrative arc, making it accessible for new audiences even today. Despite being over five decades old, the themes explored in The Fugitive remain relevant. Issues like wrongful accusation, perseverance, and redemption continue to resonate with modern audiences. Additionally, the series serves as a time capsule of sorts, offering glimpses into fashion, technology, and social issues of the mid-1960s. In conclusion, if you're looking for a captivating vintage series with a strong lead character and engaging stories, give The Fugitive a try. Its timeless themes and thrilling plot lines make it worth watching even today. What's going on, Andy? Captain Gibbs, I like to report the theft of my car. In the early 1960s, the TV industry witnessed the birth of a groundbreaking series, The Fugitive. This classic captivated audiences through its gripping storyline an innovative approach to television drama. A crucial component of this success was the masterful musical score and soundtrack that perfectly complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the show. Composer Pete Rugolo played a pivotal role in shaping the identity of the fugitive through his hauntingly beautiful melodies. With a background in jazz and classical music, he brought a unique flair to each episode, creating themes that evoke tension, sadness, and exhilaration as required by the unfolding events. One memorable piece from the series is the main theme itself, which opens with somber piano chords followed by dramatic strings that build up anticipation. According to Rugolo, these opening notes were meant to mirror the loneliness experienced by Dr. Richard Kimball, the protagonist on the run. Another significant aspect of the show's music was its ability to heighten suspense during chase scenes or tense moments. For instance, quick tempo changes accompanied by sharp brass sounds would signal imminent danger for Kimball. These clever uses of contrasting tones added depth to the visual narratives, enhancing viewer engagement. Interestingly, Rugolo didn't work alone. He led a team of skilled musicians who helped bring his visions to life. 
Their combined efforts resulted in a harmonious blend of various genres, from blues and swing to symphony and avant-garde, all working together seamlessly to serve the needs of the storyline. Moreover, the soundtrack also featured songs popular during the mid-20th century, further immersing viewers into the era depicted in the series. By integrating period-specific tunes alongside original scores, Rugolo successfully established a distinct audio aesthetic for The Fugitive, setting it apart from other shows of its time. To sum up, the creation of the musical score and soundtrack for The Fugitive stands out due to the collaborative effort between composer Pete Rugolo and his fellow musicians. Through their dedication to crafting pieces that truly reflected the emotional journey of the characters, they significantly contributed to the overall impact and longevity of this iconic series. <clears throat> uh, I see a woman. In the 1963 TV series The Fugitive, a character named Natalie Ravenna, played by Shirley Knight, left a lasting impression. So much so, that her runaway story served as inspiration for the character Dollars in the 27 short film Silency. Shirley Knight's acting career went beyond this classic show, earning her two Tony Award nominations. She won the Tony Award for Best Actress in 1976 for Kennedy's Children, and was nominated again in 1997 for The Young Man from Atlanta. As for Eileen Heckart, she achieved success later in her career when she received the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress in 1972 for Butterflies Are Free. Her win came during the 45th Annual Academy Awards held on March 27, 1973, making her the 72nd actress to receive an Oscar. The others? He's not a doctor. Look, Josephus probably isn't a bad human being, but as a doctor... One of the most iconic scenes in The Fugitive occurs in the episode titled Never Wave Goodbye, where Kimball, played by David Jansen, confronts his wife's killer, Lieutenant Gerard, portrayed by Barry Morse. As they stand face to face inside a moving train, the tension between them builds, culminating in a powerful exchange of dialogue. Director Walter Grauman expertly uses close-ups to capture the intensity of their emotions. According to Grauman, you want to get into those eyes, see what's going on behind them, you can feel the anger, the fear, everything. This intimate framing draws the viewer into the scene, heightening the emotional stakes. Jansen delivers a riveting performance, conveying years of pent-up frustration and desperation. His voice trembles slightly as he says, I didn't kill my wife. There's a raw vulnerability beneath his steely exterior, making it impossible not to root for him. Morse matches Jansen's intensity, responding with cold determination. He believes wholeheartedly in Kimball's guilt, creating an unbridgeable chasm between them. Their contrasting perspectives add depth to the narrative, transforming their encounter into more than just a physical confrontation. Cinematographer Robert L. Morrison enhances the dramatic effect through strategic lighting. Dark shadows envelop parts of the frame, symbolizing the hidden truths yet to surface. At times, light filters through the window blinds, casting stripes across their faces, a visual metaphor for the complex layers of deceit separating them. This pivotal moment resonates beyond its immediate context, foreshadowing later events in the series while encapsulating themes of justice, identity, and redemption. For audiences, it serves as a stark reminder of how compelling storytelling transcends time, leaving a lasting imprint on our collective consciousness. Feeling that well, I'll see him tomorrow. All right, I'll tell them, but they're not gonna like it. In the late 1950s, television producer Roy Huggins conceived the idea for a groundbreaking TV series, later known as The Fugitive. One day, he requested his wife, Adele Mara, to capture the moment with a photograph, which he then proudly displayed above his desk throughout his career. I'm sure he could not be proved guilty. Things like this could happen. The Fugitive, a groundbreaking TV series from 1963, left a deep cultural and social imprint. Audiences were captivated by its gripping storyline, which revolved around Dr. Richard Kimball, falsely accused of murder, who constantly evaded capture while pursuing the real killer, a mysterious one-armed man. This classic show was more than just entertainment. It sparked conversations and mirrored societal concerns. Delving into crime, punishment, and redemption, the series reflected America's fascination with legal dramas and moral dilemmas during the turbulent 1960s. With compelling performances and suspenseful narratives, each episode delved into questions surrounding guilt, innocence, and justice. By humanizing a wrongfully accused man, the show challenged viewers to question law enforcement procedures and ponder the complexities of the criminal justice system. 
Moreover, the series transcended television norms of the time through its innovative format. Eschewing traditional episodic structures, the creators crafted ongoing plot arcs spanning multiple episodes, laying the foundation for modern serialized storytelling. Influencing future generations of writers and producers, the show proved that character development and continuity could drive audience engagement and critical acclaim. As the series unfolded, the relentless pursuit of Kimball paralleled larger societal shifts. As racial tensions roiled across America, the lone fugitive embodied society's marginalized individuals navigating hostile environments. Furthermore, the portrayal of strong female characters like Lieutenant Gerard subverted gender stereotypes, highlighting women's growing presence and influence within professional spheres. Popular culture embraced the fugitive, immortalizing elements of the show in music, literature, and cinema. From Glenn Campbell's chart-topping hit The William Tell Overture, Merle Haggard's ballad The Running Kind, and even references in Stephen King novels, the show indelibly etched itself into America's collective consciousness. Decades later, director Andrew Davis helmed a successful motion picture adaptation starring Harrison Ford, further solidifying the legacy of this influential tale. Ultimately, The Fugitive served as both mirror and megaphone, reflecting contemporary issues while amplifying voices often overlooked. Its lasting appeal stems from its ability to tap into universal fears and hopes, offering timeless lessons still applicable today. Lieutenant Gerard, this is Richard Kimball. I understand you've been looking for me. In the early 1960s, a television series named The Fugitive captured audiences' attention. One of its main actors, David Jansen, holds a significant place in Hollywood, with a star on the Walk of Fame near his childhood favorite ice cream shop. His star dedication took place on his mother's birthday in 1989, a touching tribute indeed. Another notable cast member is Dabney Coleman, recognized mostly for playing Burton Fallen in the 2001 film The Guardian. While he contributed to various productions over time, many people remember him fondly from this particular role. Moreover, one cannot overlook the impressive career trajectory of actor Ron Howard. Appearing in Season 2, Episode 11 of The Fugitive, Howard later became a successful director leading stars like Robert Duvall and Kurt Russell in films such as The Paper and Backdraft. Starting as an actor, he found success behind the camera, demonstrating great adaptability in the entertainment industry. He's a friend of Dr. McAllister's. He's from out of town. In 1963, the television series The Fugitive made its debut, garnering significant critical acclaim and positive audience reactions. The show followed the story of Dr. Richard Kimball, wrongfully accused of murder, who escapes custody and embarks on a quest to find the true killer, a mysterious one-armed man. Noted TV critic Jack Gould of the New York Times praised The Fugitive, stating it had an air of quiet authority. He also commended lead actor David Jansen's performance, describing him as a study in restrained intensity. Similarly, Time magazine lauded the series, declaring it tense, exciting, and first-rate melodrama. Audiences were captivated by the suspenseful narrative and sympathetic protagonist. Letters poured in from viewers expressing their support and anticipation for each new episode. Some even claimed they planned their schedules around watching The Fugitive. Throughout its four-season run, The Fugitive earned several award nominations and wins. At the 14th Primetime Emmy Awards, the series was nominated for Outstanding Dramatic Series, while David Jansen received nods for lead actor in a drama three years in a row ultimately winning in 1966. Bill Raish, who portrayed the menacing one-armed man, also earned a Primetime Emmy nomination for Guest Actor in a Drama in 1967. Additionally, the iconic theme music composed by Pete Rugolo won two Grammy Awards in 1965 for Best Original Score Written for Television and Best Background Arrangement. These accolades served as testaments to the hard work and dedication put forth by everyone involved in bringing The Fugitive to life. They recognized the quality of acting, writing, direction, and musical score, further solidifying the show's status as a timeless classic. Moreover, the success of The Fugitive paved the way for future dramatic thrillers and anthology series, leaving behind a lasting impact on both critics and audiences alike. Before gaining fame through Star Trek, actors William Shatner, DeForest Kelly, and James Doohan had appearances in The Fugitive. Robert Duvall, who later became known for his role in The Godfather, 
honed his skills at the Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theater in New York, and performed in plays like A View from the Bridge and Tomorrow at St. Mark's Playhouse prior to his appearance in the series. The final episode of The Fugitive garnered immense popularity, attracting over 72% of television viewers, setting a viewership record unbroken until the Dallas Cliffhanger episode 13 years later. Anyway, I knew Helen was in there. I started to think. Why might it... During the filming of this classic, The Fugitive, many fascinating stories unfolded behind the scenes. David Jansen, who played Dr. Richard Kimball, was known for his dedication. He often worked late hours and insisted on performing most stunts himself. This led to some memorable moments, like the time he had to jump off a moving train. Although it wasn't planned, the scene made it into the final cut and added authenticity to his character's desperate situation. Barbara Hale, who played Kimball's ally Gerard's secretary, once shared an amusing incident. While shooting a scene where she hands over evidence, the prop envelope contained real letters addressed to her. She laughed about how mail ended up in the studio and joked that maybe someone thought they were sending fan mail directly to her character. Another intriguing fact involves Jackie Cooper, the director. Before joining the entertainment industry, he held various jobs including working as a newspaper boy alongside a young Lana Turner. When casting for a newsboy role in The Fugitive, Cooper surprised everyone by revealing he knew just the right person. Lana Tuner's daughter, Cheryl Crane. Despite the intense drama portrayed on screen, the set of The Fugitive was filled with camaraderie. Props master Daryl Silvera would frequently create humorous hidden jokes within sets. For instance, inside one of the prison cells, he carved a tiny wooden sculpture of actor Edward G. Robinson, which brought chuckles from the cast when discovered. These are merely glimpses of what went on beyond the lens while creating this unforgettable television series. Edward Asner holds a unique record in the Emmy Awards for his role as Lou Grant in The Fugitive and its subsequent spin-off, Lou Grant. Interestingly, Uzo Aduba also shares this distinction, having won Emmys in both comedy and drama categories for her portrayal of Crazy Eyes and Orange is the New Black. Neil Saban, responsible for Medvi's programming, has praised David Jansen's exceptional talent, emphasizing that he appeared in nearly every scene of this iconic series. Indeed, Jansen's remarkable acting skills were instrumental to the success of The Fugitive. In other news related to this classic, Telly Savalas received the key to the city by the city of New York in 1990. His portrayal of Lieutenant Theo Kojak in the Marcus Nelson murders, which served as a pilot for the popular TV series Kojak, led to this prestigious recognition. The film itself had been previously designated as the official movie of New York City due to its cultural significance. Richard, we're getting somewhere now. Richard, Dr. Richard. The Fugitive, a groundbreaking 1963 TV series, has left an indelible mark on the world of television and cinema. This classic pioneered the genre of dramatic thrillers, captivating audiences through its intriguing storyline and innovative format. The show followed Dr. Richard Kimball, wrongfully accused of his wife's murder, who escapes from custody and tirelessly searches for the one-armed man he believes responsible. Featuring compelling episodes filled with tension, suspense, and unexpected twists, the series set new standards for storytelling and character development. Its unique structure, blending self-contained plots with overarching narrative arcs, laid the foundation for many successful modern shows. Moreover, its memorable chase scenes have influenced countless action sequences in later productions. One notable example of The Fugitive's far-reaching impact was the Oscar-winning 1993 film adaptation starring Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones. By staying true to the essence of the original, while updating visual elements and pacing for contemporary tastes, the movie became both a critical and commercial success. It demonstrated how even decades after its initial run, this classic could still resonate strongly with new generations of viewers. Apart from the film industry, The Fugitive also significantly affected popular culture. Elements of the series can be seen echoed in diverse mediums like literature, music, comics, and video games. Furthermore, its themes of redemption, resilience, and relentless pursuit continue inspiring creative minds today, resulting in numerous adaptations, remakes, and homages across various platforms. Overall, the influential power of The Fugitive lies not merely in its gripping narratives, but also in its ability to transcend boundaries and inspire artistic innovation.
As we look back at this timeless piece, we appreciate its profound contributions to shaping our cinematic landscape, leaving us eagerly anticipating what future creators will draw from its rich legacy. Yes, thank you. That'll be fine. In the 1960s, a TV series titled The Fugitive captured audiences' attention. One of its stars, David Jansen, had quite an intriguing persona. Actress Deborah Raffin, who worked with him later, shared that she found his rugged image intimidating. However, she discovered a contrastingly kind and thoughtful man, a true gentleman. Another notable figure connected to the fugitive is Edward Asner. After his role here, he became best known as Lou Grant in the Mary Tyler Moore show. Interestingly, he remained the last original cast member to pass away from this iconic series. Lastly, let's talk about Val Avery, another actor who graced The Fugitive. His career included collaborations with director John Cassavetes on five films Too Late Blues, Faces, Minnie, and Moskowitz, The Killing of a Chinese Bookie, and Gloria. Such associations further underscore the wide-reaching impact and influence of those involved in this memorable television production. Are you fast, Lincoln? In the early 1960s, a TV series named The Fugitive featured a notable cast member, Robert Duvall. Unbeknownst to many, Duvall is linked by familial ties to both Robert E. Lee and President George Washington. Quite fascinatingly, years later, Duvall would portray General Lee in the movie Gods and Generals, while Jeff Daniels, who previously acted as Washington in The Crossing, became his co-star. Prior to joining The Fugitive, Duvall left an indelible impression on audiences through his role in To Kill a Mockingbird. Among The Fugitive's ensemble was also actor David Jansen, remembered fondly by actress Jacqueline Scott. She described Jansen as having a dual nature, being extroverted yet somewhat reserved. These complexities contributed significantly to Jansen's compelling performance in the series. Another talented individual involved in the production was Shirley Knight. Despite becoming a mother just four months earlier, she resumed acting promptly, gracing the stage in the Broadway play titled The Watering Place. Clearly, dedication marked the careers of these artists, presenting us with unforgettable viewing experiences. Only your conscience can build it. In the classic television series, The Fugitive, several actors and their family members played significant roles. For instance, David Jansen's close relatives made appearances as extras throughout the show. Meanwhile, Jacqueline Scott gained fame for her portrayal of Dr. Richard Kimball's sister, Donna Taft. Interestingly, before David Jansen was cast as Richard Kimball, other notable actors like Robert Lansing, James Franciscus, and Anthony Franciosa were also considered for the lead role. Each one brought unique qualities to the table, making the selection process quite challenging. However, it was ultimately Jansen who took on the iconic character, delivering a memorable performance that left an indelible mark on audiences worldwide. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Next of kin Gladys Tallman, sister. In the 1960s television series, The Fugitive, viewers were introduced to actors like Lawrence Naya Smith and Richard Anderson. Unbeknownst to some, Naismith's acting talent ran in the family, with his grandson, Woody Naismith, following in his footsteps as an up-and-coming actor based in Los Angeles. On the other hand, Richard Anderson donned a hairpiece during his time playing Oscar Goldman in The Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman franchises. However, eagle-eyed fans may spot him sans to pay in two specific episodes, The Case of the Paper Bullets and Runner in the Dark, offering a glimpse of his natural thinning locks. A recurring joke throughout The Fugitive involved protagonist Dr. Richard Kimball, frequently seeking refuge in the dilapidated Edmond Hotel across various cities. Interestingly enough, these hotel entrances formed part of a standing set on the studio backlot, featuring a standardized design meant to represent a typical downtown area. As a result, the ever-present Edmond Hotel served as a humorous reminder that countless metropolises seemingly boasted their own seedy establishments bearing this same moniker. $43. In the television series The Fugitive, actor Dabs Greer played significant roles in films sharing similar themes. He appeared in Riot and Cell Block 11, and Con Air, both featuring dangerous prisoners taking control of their environments. One notable character is a military man wrongly imprisoned for manslaughter in a bar fight. Initially envisioned as a contemporary western, The Fugitive borrowed elements from Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. Protagonist Richard Kimball, like Jean Valjean, eludes law enforcement while constantly changing locations, 
Lieutenant Gerard, his relentless pursuer, shares traits with Inspector Javert, and even bears his namesake. As the series progressed, network executives considered expanding its appeal by introducing new storylines. Plans included setting future episodes in exotic destinations such as Mexico, Puerto Rico, and Hawaii, aiming to capture a broader audience. Additionally, producers weighed bringing a young child into Kimball's life during the program's fourth season to attract younger viewers. However, these ideas ultimately proved unfeasible due to logistics and concerns regarding consistency with existing narratives. David Jansen, who portrayed Kimball, opposed extending the show beyond four seasons owing to exhaustion from the rigorous production schedule. Despite initial enthusiasm for further adventures abroad and changes within the series, fatigue prevailed, leading to the conclusion of The Fugitive after just four seasons. It's going for a while. I just wanted to play. In the early 1960s, a groundbreaking TV series called The Fugitive captured audiences worldwide. One of its leading actors, David Jansen, received high praise from fellow actor Patrick McNee, who regarded him as the best in television during that time. Coincidentally, another cast member of The Fugitive, Telly Savalas, shared screen space with two other individuals, Donald Pleasance and Max von Sydow, who went on to portray the iconic James Bond villain, Ernst Stavro Bluffel. Savalas played Blofeld in on Her Majesty's Secret Service, while Pleasants appeared in You Only Live Twice, and Von Saito featured in Never Say Never Again. After wrapping up the initial episode of The Fugitive, lead actors David Jansen and Barry Morse took a stroll together. During their walk, Morse turned to Jansen and questioned if they would continue working beyond just a few short weeks, indicating their uncertainty regarding the show's future success. Where's the expressions never change, only the faces. Two great big... Edward Asner holds a unique place in television history as one of only three actors to win Emmys across comedy, drama, and limited series categories. His work in The Fugitive contributed to this achievement. Meanwhile, Telly Savalas, known for playing villains early in his career, made a significant transformation. After being diagnosed with bladder cancer, doctors recommended a radical cystectomy due to the spread of the disease. However, Savalas declined. Later, he gained fame as a homicide detective in Kojak, following his role in the Marcus Nelson murders. These developments highlight the diverse journeys of these notable actors. Of glory and money there were plenty. On Park Avenue were the great physicians. In the opening credits of the popular TV series, The Fugitive, the train derailment scene is actually stock footage borrowed from the 1938 movie The Young and Heart. This clip features actress Janet Gaynor supporting Minnie Dupree, played by Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Interestingly, Lois Nettleton, who appeared in several episodes of The Fugitive, was laid to rest at St. Raymond Cemetery in the Bronx, New York, despite being born in Illinois and residing in California. On another note, Eileen Heckart returned to acting just four months after giving birth to her son Philip to start working on the Broadway play The Bad Seed. Her dedication to her craft is truly commendable. Man. Yes. In the opening credits of The Fugitive, the train carrying Richard Kimball to his execution is surprisingly not American, but French. This detail might seem insignificant, yet it adds a layer of intrigue to the show's setting. Dr. Kimball, played by David Jansen, is a man of great medical education. His alma mater, Cornell Medical School, and his internship in New York are real. Furthermore, his advanced studies at Guy's Hospital in London and his residency at Memorial Hospital in Chicago add depth to his character, making him more relatable and believable. Lawrence Nyasmith, who plays Brock, has an interesting connection to science fiction literature. He starred in Village of the Damned, an adaptation of John Wyndham's novel The Midwich Cuckoos, and in Quest for Love, based on Wyndham's short story Random Quest. These roles demonstrate his versatility as an actor outside of The Fugitive. In the early 1960s, a memorable television series called The Fugitive captured audiences nationwide. Two individuals associated with this classic later found themselves intertwined in intriguing ways. Eileen Heckart, known for her role as Flo Meredith in The Fugitive, holds a unique distinction. Among the few performers to reprise roles across different shows, she appeared on Lou Grant, which originally stemmed from The Mary Tyler Moore Show. Her character first emerged in The Fugitive, making her journey quite remarkable. 
William Conrad, another prominent figure connected to the fugitive, rests eternally at Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills. Interestingly, he shares a plot with several renowned TV detectives, including those from Kojak, Perry Mason, and Dragnet, all laid to rest nearby. Heckard achieved impressive milestones during her career. Alongside two primetime Emmys, she claimed an Academy Award for Best, Supporting Actress in Butterflies Are Free, and an Emmy for Outstanding Guest Actress in a Comedy Series in Love and War. Impressively, just three women can claim these dual victories, Cloris Leachman, Melissa Leo, and Heckard herself. Well, I just, I just don't want to know anything's gonna happen to me. In the early 60s, a TV series named The Fugitive featured actors who later gained recognition in other notable works. For instance, Lois Nettleton, known for her role in this classic, received a Tony nomination in 1976 for her performance in They Knew What They Wanted. Richard Anderson, another cast member, continued to work in television after The Fugitive. His character in The Six Million Dollar Man, airing in 1974, belonged to a fictitious government department named The Osai. Interestingly, in reality, Anderson created an orientation video for a distinct government agency also called the OSI, unrelated to the show. Even outside The Fugitive, these artists left their mark. Telly Savalas, initially considered for the lead role in Cool Hand Luke, couldn't accept due to his fear of flying. Eventually replaced by Paul Newman, Savalas went on to become famously recognized for his portrayal of Lieutenant Theo Kojak in the series Kojak. These actors' careers amply demonstrate how they brought diversity and depth to various roles across multiple productions. I'm glad to hear that. He didn't know anyone else. Richard Anderson, known for his role in The Fugitive, holds a unique distinction as one of the very few actors to play the same character on two different series simultaneously. From 1976 to 1978, he portrayed Oscar Goldman in both The Six Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman. Leo G. Carroll, Martin E. Brooks, David Hasselhoff, and Fred Thompson are among the other actors who have accomplished this feat. David Jansen, on the other hand, gained fame through his role as Richard Kimball in The Fugitive. Although he had appeared in other television series like Checkmate and Route 66, it was his portrayal of Kimball that launched his career. There have been rumors about an alternate ending for The Fugitive, suggesting that Kimball would be revealed as the true killer by removing a false arm. However, these rumors seem to have originated from a never-realized plan by Barry Morse and David Jansen to pull a false arm gag at public appearances. Jansen often joked that Kimball killed his wife because she talked too much. Additionally, Morse revealed that he and Jansen conceived an alternate epilogue for the series finale in which Kimball wakes up in bed with his wife Helen, telling her that he had a horrible nightmare. Another idea proposed by Jansen was to have Kimball read a newspaper account of the one-armed man's execution on a beach, detach his prosthetic arm with a half grin, and walk off into the surf. Whether these ideas were serious or merely playful remains unknown. These intriguing details provide a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes creativity and humor surrounding this classic TV series. That might be bad for him. Besides, he's sleeping. <laughs> In the TV series The Fugitive, actor Bill Raish, who played the memorable character known as the One-Armed Man, faced an unexpected situation. Some guest actresses attempted to compliment him by commenting on special effects that made it appear he was missing an arm, unaware that Raish himself had just one limb. Another cast member, Telly Savalas, shared screen time with his own sibling during his career. His brother, George Savalas, appeared beside him in the popular police procedural drama Kojak. Additionally, they acted together in three movies, including Genghis Khan, The Slender Thread, and Kelly's Heroes. Actor R.G. Armstrong, featured in several episodes of The Fugitive, formed a professional relationship with director Sam Peckinpah after working together on The Westerner. Consequently, Armstrong went on to feature prominently in many Peckinpah films like Ride the High Country, playing a devout Christian fundamentalist, a preacher in Major Dundee, and a ruthless deputy sheriff opposite Chris Crofferson and Bob, Dylan and Pat Garrett, and Billy the Kid. Be tonight. Hey. 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 The popular TV series The Fugitive draws inspiration from the Samuel Shepard murder case of 1954, but its creator, Roy Huggins, maintained that it wasn't directly based on it. Instead, Huggins cited his fondness for westerns as the main influence behind the show's concept. 
He aimed to create a modern tale centered around a lone wanderer, much like the archetypal cowboy in Western films. One notable actor who made an impression in The Fugitive was Telly Savalas, who later became famous for playing Detective Kojak. After appearing in The Greatest Story Ever Told, Savalas decided to shave his head, which led to his distinctive bald appearance. This new look served him well in various roles that followed, blending elements of both humor and menace. Another memorable figure connected to The Fugitive is Edward Asner, known for his role as news director Lou Grant across multiple shows. Interestingly, Asner played the same character, Lou Grant, in four distinct series The Mary Tyler Moore Show, Rodu, Lou Grant, and even briefly during Roseanne. His consistent portrayal added depth to the character over time, allowing viewers to follow Lou Grant's journey through these diverse programs. Exact time you claim you were beaten up the Moving forward from the acquisition of QM Productions by Taft Broadcasting in 1979, it's worth noting that the remake rights to The Fugitive were taken by Keith Barish, and eventually ended up with Warner Brothers, while the rights to the original series were obtained by Spelling Television, Paramount Television, and CBS Studios. In other news, fans of The Fugitive may find it interesting that two notable actors who have appeared in various productions connected to this classic TV show have also shared the screen in other projects. For instance, Robert Duvall, known for his role in The Fugitive, played the same character's ancestor in Gods and Generals. Previously, Duvall had worked alongside Martin Sheen, who initially portrayed Robert E. Lee in Gettysburg in the popular war film Apocalypse Now. Lastly, regarding the fugitive actor Val Avery, he has quite the impressive resume playing bartenders in numerous films like No Way to Treat a Lady, Easy Money, and even an episode of The Twilight Zone titled The Night of the Meek. Spittle. Jeffy died. They're sitting right there beside him. In the television series The Fugitive, actor Robert Duvall played a notable role. Before achieving success, he was close friends and even roommates with fellow aspiring actors Dustin Hoffman and Gene Hackman in New York City. All three were known for their love of pulling off intricate pranks. However, Hoffman and Duvall stood out for their romantic pursuits, while Duvall and Hackman frequently got into bar fights due to their hot tempers. Interestingly, Duvall has two brothers, William and John, who appeared in his self-directed film Angelo My Love released in 1983. They acted as singing performers in the movie. As for actress Eileen Heckart, she shared a memorable dining experience with Hollywood legend Betta Davis during her career. On one occasion, Heckart successfully quit smoking, but after having dinner with Davis, she picked up the habit once again. I'm taking only of your good. Leave Jeff alone, Lars. In The Fugitive from 1963, Telly Savalas made a notable impact by portraying two different Alcatraz prison inmates across his career. His first appearance was in Birdman of Alcatraz, released in 1962, followed by his role in Alcatraz The Whole Shocking Story from 1980. Moreover, Edward Asner lent his vocal talents to several animated adaptations of popular comic books. For instance, he voiced J. Jonah Jameson, the editor of the Daily Bugle, in Spider-Man the Animated Series. Additionally, Asner gave life to the character of Ben Parker, Peter Parker, Spider-Man's beloved uncle, in The Spectacular Spider-Man. Edward Benz, another actor who graced The Fugitive, boasted appearances in multiple films recognized by the Academy Awards. Among them are Twelve Angry Men, Judgment at Nuremberg, Patton, and The Verdict. Notably, he experienced success with Patton, which emerged victorious in the Best Picture category during its respective award season. But you're too busy. Wait. I can finish. The Fugitive gained immense popularity during its run, leading to a unique contest proposal from a German magazine. Readers were to have the chance to stalk the show's star, David Jansen, through the streets of West Berlin. This just goes to show how invested audiences became in the series. Before his breakthrough role in The Fugitive, Telly Savalas made an impression at an audition for the CBS anthology series, Armstrong Circle Theatre. Initially planning to support an acting friend, Savalas instead caught the eye of the casting directors with his sinister demeanor. This unexpected opportunity paved the way for more television appearances and motion picture roles. Creator Roy Huggins faced significant challenges when trying to sell The Fugitive to various producers. Concerned that audiences wouldn't embrace a story centered around a fugitive, many believed it to be disrespectful towards the American justice system. However, after meeting Leonard H. Goldenson of ABC, 
Huggins finally found someone willing to take a risk on what turned out to be a groundbreaking series. In 1963, the series finale of The Fugitive attracted an unprecedented number of viewers, making it the most watched finale at the time, and the third highest rated to this day, surpassed only by MASH and Cheers. Interestingly, the exterior of Dr. Richard Kimball's family home in this classic television series is the same house featured in Leave it to Beaver. Delving deeper into the production team, one notable individual is R.G. Armstrong who played a recurring role as Lt. Gerard's superior officer. He shared a unique connection with A.M. Leonard, another cast member, and his high school classmate. Their fathers were avid hunters who frequently went on hunting trips together during their youth in Birmingham, when putting food on the table relied heavily on successful hunts. A career, a pension at the end of it. Now do you seriously expect me to sacrifice? Did you watch The Fugitive when it first aired in the 1960s? This classic TV series surely left an impression on many. We'd love to hear about your experiences. How did this show make you feel? Perhaps it inspired you, gave you excitement every week, or made you think deeply about its themes. Maybe it even led you to explore other films and shows. If you have any personal stories connected to The Fugitive, please share them with us. You could discuss memorable moments while watching with family or friends, or perhaps how it affected your view on television and storytelling. We would also like to know if this series had any influence on your choice of career or hobbies. Maybe it sparked interest in acting, writing, or producing. Or simply, did you find yourself drawn into Dr. Richard Kimball's thrilling cat and mouse chase each episode? Don't forget to engage with our community by liking, sharing, and subscribing to keep up with more cinematic discussions. Let's get a conversation going and learn from one another's unique perspectives. I'm sure you brought those pickup reels.